Having troubles in making your subject agree with its verb? Don't you worry because this one is perfect for you. Hi Sayers, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we'll be talking about one of the most, if not the most, common struggles among students and among all of us. And that is subject-verb agreement. This is very crucial in making sentences and turning these sentences into paragraphs. So without further ado, let's start discussing this one. But before that, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell to get updated to my future uploads. So we'll be talking about the subject-verb agreement or the SBA rules. What are the objectives that we have to achieve for today? First, state rules of subject-verb agreement. And second here is construct sentences using correct subject-verb agreement. Maybe, uh, maybe others are asking why do we have to identify the objectives before we start our discussion. It's very important that we know what should be achieved in discussing or learning a particular topic for you to be guided along the way. Okay, now just a disclaimer, based on my reference for this particular lesson, we will only have 12, but maybe if you do your own research, you may see more than 12 or less than 12. But this is what you should remember. These rules may be stated in different ways, but the concept is just the same. All you have to do is all, all those rules, to be part of your system you, so you will be able to get accustomed to it and you will be able to have a strong foundation on how to form sentences later on paragraphs let's have number one number one if the subject is singular the verb must be singular too this one is very basic now let's have examples for this one marielle dances gracefully in making your subject agree with its verb, it's very important to know or to locate the subject and verb's placement in the sentence. In this sentence, we only have three words, so it's very sick. <laughs> in Philippine, we call it stay still, or it's easy to locate the, the sentences, subject, and verb. Marielle is a subject, dances is the verb. Now, Marielle is singular. Then, the verb is also singular or, shall we say, S form. When the subject is singular, then it requires the S form of the verb. Another example here. Johnny Boy sings effortlessly. Johnny Boy is singular. It requires the S form of the verb. So this one, these, these examples, I mean, are correct. Now, if you were able to watch my previous educational vlogs, we have here, we also have here, me time. I will be giving you five to 10 seconds to compose your own example for this first rule. If the subject is singular, the verb must be singular too. And your timer starts now. Four, three, two, one. Okay, I hope that you, you are able to compose your own example there and you're able to apply the first rule. Let's have number two. If the subject is plural, the verb must be plural as well example the children want to go outside to see the parade let's identify the subject and its verb obviously the subject here is children children is plural therefore it requires the base form of the verb what they mean by the base form of the verb the root word or you're not going to add any any letter or anything to that verb 
one, here is the verb. So therefore, this one follows the second rule. Another example. May and Lizelle decide to meet each other at the mall. May and Lizelle are plural. Or this, this subject is plural. Therefore, it requires the base form of the verb. Now, I will be giving you five seconds to compose your own example. Another need task. Five, four, three, two, one. If you need more time, just continue composing your own example. Let's have the third rule. When the subject of the sentence is composed of two or more nouns connected by and use a plural verb. Actually, the previous example can also be used here. But to explain it further, we have here other examples. The doctoral student and the committee members write every day. Um, write every day. There should be a period here. Now, there are two subjects here as the rule states. The doctoral student and the committee members. The subjects are connected by end, by, con by the conjunction end. These two subjects are considered plural. Therefore, it requires the base form of the verb, which is right. That's correct. Another example. The percentage of employees who called in sick and the number of employees who left their jobs within two years are reflective of the level of job satisfaction. The subject here is connected or the subjects here are connected by the word and the percentage and the number. Uh, the simple subject then it requires the plural form of the verb which is are therefore it follows the third rule remember huh? connected by the coordinating conjunction and and in this particular rule it requires a plural verb Need time? Compose your own example. Three, two, one. Let's have number four. When there is one subject and more than one verb, the verbs throughout the sentence must agree with the subject. There are times that when we construct our sentences, there are really instances that there could be one more than one subject or there could be more than one verb so here's the rule you just have to make sure that the subject you are agreeing is correct therefore if you are able to locate the subject correctly you will be able to use the correct or the appropriate verb as well example Interviews are one way to collect data and allow researchers to gain an in-depth understanding of participants. So we have here the subject interviews with S, huh? with the letter S. Therefore, in this particular example, interviews is considered a plural subject. The verb here is are. It's correct. And the other verb, well, according to the rule, there are two verbs here, is allowed. It's the base form of the verb. Therefore, it follows the rule. Huh? So all throughout, all throughout the sentence, 
the number of the verb must agree with the number of the subject. There could be some changes if the verb or the the preceding verbs are agreeing with a different ha, with a different subject. But in this particular example, it just agrees with the same subject. Another example. An assumption is something that is generally accepted as true and is an important consideration when conducting a doctoral study. Now, let's identify the subject. I will give you the floor. What is your answer? Correct. The subject here is assumption. Then, the underlined verbs are is all throughout this sentence or this particular example the verb used is is something that is generally accepted as true and is an important consideration when conducting a doctoral study all you have to remember is you must agree with the subject you are really pertaining to now is the time for you to construct your own example. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. You were able to give your own example. And I would like to suggest make more, more than one example. So you'll be able to really apply these rules. We're done with number four. Let's have the next one. Number five. When a phrase comes between the subject and the verb, remember that the verb still still agrees with the subject, not the noun or pronoun in the phrase following the subject of the sentence. Let's see here in this particular example. So you will be able to visualize. The student, as well as the committee members, is excited. Yeah. Here, in this particular example, the student here is, is the subject. And we have what we call intervening phrase, which doesn't affect, which doesn't affect the number of the subject. With that being said, student still remains what singular correct therefore the verb that is required for us to use is singular form also therefore this one is correct is excited huh? this is just an intervening phrase we'll be able to know more about this later on with the other rule second example Strategies that the teacher uses to encourage classroom participation include using small groups and clarifying expectations. Well, there are many words here. Usually, when the sentence is composed of this kind of phrasing or this many, this number of words, Students tend to be confused on how to on how to identify the subject. Now, in this particular example, the subject is strategies. And the phrase we are talking about here is that the teacher uses to encourage classroom participation. After that is the verb, which is include. Include agrees with the subject strategies. Strategies is plural. Therefore, it requires the base form of the verb, which is include. Now, always remember, you just have to identify the subject. And do not be misconstrued or do not be confused with the intervening phrase after it or following, following the subject because it just modifies. It just modifies the subject. Always remember, huh? it still agrees with the subject. 
me time maybe 5 to 10 seconds because it will be a long one your timer start now 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Good. Continue making your own example. Let's have number six. Number six rule here states when two or more singular nouns or pronouns are connected by or or nor, use a singular verb. Now, let's see examples here. The chairperson or the CEO approves the proposal before proceeding. Remember, huh? do not use the rule where we use where we have two subjects joined by end in this rule because those two rules are entirely different. Here, the subjects are joined or connected by or or nor or expresses what? option an option or a choice or choices i mean so in this particular example we have two subjects the chairperson and the ceo and what makes it different there it's connected joined by or now we have here the underlined verb which is approves which connotes the yes form of the verb Therefore, the subject here is singular. Regardless if we have two subjects here, because based on the rule, if it's connected by or or nor, we should use the S form of the verb or a singular verb. Huh? And we'll be having more discussions about other connectors later on. But this time, you will have your own turn of composing your own exam. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And I think we'll be stopping here. We will be having the second half of the SBA rules on the next video that we will be having. I hope you will be able to review all the rules because all the rules are important and are prerequisite for you to construct comprehensive sentences, correctly, correctly structured sentences and paragraphs. So that's it. This has been Simon for the part one of the SBA rules only here on Simon Says BA. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll get updated to my future uploads. See you again next time. Bye-bye.